Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 and it says this which hope we have as the anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and with which entered into within the veil do we realize that on resurrection sunday that when jesus on the cross said says it is finished and he gave up the ghost he gave up his spirit to the father and at that at that exact moment at that exact moment in the tabernacle the veil which was the veil that 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 kept the holy of holy separate from the rest of the tabernacle only the priests could go into the holy of holies and he only did it once a year and they tied a they tied a, a, a rope around his legs so that if, if he had any sin or, or if he wasn't uh, serving God with the, with the desire that God wanted him to have, he, he would, they would drag him out because he would be dead. Because see, the, 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 presence of, the presence of sin cannot be in the presence of God. So when Jesus gave up, when he said it is finished, the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. In other words, glory was exposed. God said the Old Testament tabernacle is open. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the thing that it that what the thing that was exposed was our soul. Our soul was exposed to the glory of God. Our spirit had already and had already experienced had already experienced the presence of God. But it was our soul that we're that that we're living in in the natural that had not been allowed to enter into the presence of God. And so it says here the anchor of our soul when the veil was ripped was two things it was it was sure and it was steadfast why was it sure well 18 tells you why it was sure it was sure because of the two immutable things in which it is impossible for god to lie that's the first thing that when we finally gave when we finally gave ourselves to God and our soul to God, we realized and we, were, and we were taught that God cannot lie, that His Word is true, and that His Spirit is truth. So the, the first thing that our soul, that the, the, the us that exist on this earth, the first thing that is exposed when we accept Christ is that God is not a liar and that he is truth and the second thing is that he is a refuge that we that we uh, that we can go to him because that is where our hope is you see when Jesus was on the cross he basically when he said it is finished and his, and his spirit went to be with the Father, he ended, he ended the Old Testament sacrifices. All right, are you hearing me? Verse number 20. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Do you know what Melchizedek means? The word, the, the word is a combination of two Hebrew words. The first, the first part of it is Mel, and that means king. The second part of it, Chesedek, it means righteousness. It means righteousness. Do you realize 
it says in the order of Melchizedek. Do you, do you realize what the order of Melchizedek is? You see, when God, when God formed man, he created Adam, and he created Adam as, as the priest, the, the holy priest from the very beginning. The order of, of Melchizedek is this, that the priest of God will be, will be forever. That was why he designed. That was what God wanted for Adam to be, the priest of God forever. But then when the fall came and death came, the order of the, of the priest of God had to be passed down to their, to their sons. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. So, so there, there, were, there were eight priests and I'm, first it was uh, Adam and then I guess Seth and then anyway, on down. Ironically, the eighth priest of the, in the order of God's Melchizedek order was, guess who? Noah. Noah was the eighth priest and Noah actually ended ended the earth as it was originally created. Yeah, are you hearing me? But God's priest, God's priest was designed to, to never die. That's why Jesus is our high priest and he never died. He died on the cross in the flesh, but the spirit of the high priest of God never died and will never die. Are you hearing me? So the order of Melchizedek is that that the, the priests of God, the priests of God are forever. But as man does, <laughs> we came along and we created what we call the order. I can't think of who the, the order of, um, I can't think of what is what uh, Aaron. There you go. I knew I'd get it here in a minute. The order of Aaron, which is the Levitical priest, and and the order of Aaron was that the priest, the high priest, actually, the purpose of the high priest of the Levitical order was to take up. Are you ready? To do sacrifices. And oh, by the way to take the tithe. Are you hearing me? So, the, the, so we had two priesthoods. We had the priesthood of God in the order of Melchizedek and we had the Levitical priest in the order of Aaron. Well, when Jesus died, the priesthood of Aaron ended. Are y'all ready for this? But we hear over and over and over, even today, well, they're building the temple in Israel and we're going to have, re, going to redo blood sacrifices and we're going to be, huh? The red heifer and all. Uh, the red heifer and all. You see, what, what happens here is, are y'all ready? If, if, there is a priesthood in Israel in the temple doing the sacrifices my opinion okay it's a counterfeit priesthood it's a counterfeit priesthood we've always talked about our whole lives about the uh, the end times and we've talked about uh, the man of perdition and 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 all of the antichrist and all of those things and we've always wanted to look 
we've taught and we wanted to look at the Catholic Church and we wanted to look at other organizations and if the priesthood of Israel is reestablished it's a it's a counterfeit no. let me just say it that way because the priesthood ended in the order of Melchizedek when Christ was sacrificed are you are you hearing me so as we get ready towards moving towards the end let's see if I can go over to Hebrews 7 and it says the, the priestly order of Melchizedek for this Melchizedek king of Salem the priest of the Most High God who met with Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him you know who the you know who the the priesthood of Melchizedek you know who the high priest was when Abraham returned that gave see see Melchizedek may or may not we don't know have been a real person it may have just been an organ, an, an order of God but we believe that the priesthood that met Abraham was actually Noah. He was actually the eighth priest that met Abraham. But from this, it says that the king of Salem, so it's a different person because you see, the original meaning of Melchizedek is the kingdom of righteousness or the king of righteousness whereas this this priest is called the king of peace so it there could be an a per, and possibly even noah was known as a king of priests or a king of, of peace so anyway and 7.2 says, To whom also Abraham gave a tenth of all, first being by interpreta interpretation the king of righteousness. Now you see that we're establishing that that is the original order of Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. And then it says, And after that, also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. So, that indicates to me that they're two different, two different uh, orders, two different people at least. Without father, mother, descendants. You see, we don't quite understand. We don't quite understand that when God, when God formed the priesthood, it was not under, it was not under the law. Are you hearing me? God and the first seven priests were, were before, before the order of Aaron was formed. So God, when he saw, what did it say in, in Genesis? When he saw the heart of man was evil. And at that time, the heart of man was not under the law because the law hadn't been given. And what is, I think it's in, in uh, I think it's in Romans where it says that it is the law. It is the law that showed us, showed us sin. Before the law, sin was not was not recognized as sin. It was recognized as disobedience. Are you hearing me? Or, my favorite, unrighteousness. God formed righteousness and he placed it in man. But man's unrighteousness, he fell away from God. And so when we realize, and we teach a lot, or we've taught a lot, about sin but you see Christ on Christ as the high priest of forever Christ 
I try not to. Christ paid the price for sin. Are you hearing me? He paid the price for sin forever. So once we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are we are no longer we are no longer old sinners. We're now we're now called the righteousness of God in Christ. And when we fall, we're not sinners, we're unrighteous. Everybody looking at me like, have you lost your so sin had, price has been paid for. And so our, so our goal for the rest of our life is to not to, to, see, we spend so much time trying not to sin when we should spend our time trying to live righteous. Amen? Amen? So God is saying that, that you have been covered by the blood of Jesus, the price was paid on the cross. But what was established was a new, was a new high priest. You are no longer under the Old Testament high priest the way it was laid out. You are now, you are now under the high priest of God, which is Jesus Christ. Because his, he will be forever. He will never die. There will never be an ending to the high priest Jesus Christ. Amen? The only thing that we have to understand is that as our high priest, then all we have to do is live in connection with Him. Amen? And how do we, how do you, how do we connect with, with God? We connect with God, the first thing is, by believing that He is. Hello? You've got to believe God is. And then the second thing, I think it's in, in Hebrews 11, it says that, that you must believe that He is. Are you, are you going to... And you must believe... You must believe that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You see, most of my training was trying to keep God from, from knocking me out. Most of my training was to try not to, to make God mad. And I never really quite understood that if, I, that if I diligently sought after God in righteousness, then He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Now, I said all that to get to this point. Y'all remember that Thomas, after...